Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today, we're going to be talking about Ripple and XRP, as those are the vast majority of crypto and finance. And with that being said, I hope that you're all having a beautiful day or a beautiful night, if you guys are out there in the world. So, it's happening. It's official. We are starting to see crypto really coming up in politics, mainstream media now. And it's all really kind of centered around Bitcoin. Now, if you guys do remember what Trump was saying around crypto when he was in presidency, he was not very supportive of crypto. But now things are looking a little bit more interesting. We actually have from Watcher Guru, just in President Donald Trump says many people are embracing Bitcoin and wanting to pay with it. You're seeing something that's interesting. I can live with it. And check this out. Isn't the next logical step for you to embrace Bitcoin? Because Bitcoin obviously is decentralized. The government can't get its hands on it. What about Bitcoin all the young people, including African-Americans, who are, are very interested in it? Well, a lot of people are doing it. I always liked one currency. I, could, I call it a currency. I like the dollar. But a lot of people are doing it. And frankly, uh, it's, it's taken a life of its own. You probably have to do some regulation, as you know. But many people are uh, embracing it. And more and more, I'm seeing people wanting to pay Bitcoin and you're seeing something that's interesting. So uh, I can live with it one way or the other. I've always liked one really powerful thing, and that's called the dollar. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't the next now, of course, one really powerful thing, it's called the dollar. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't say the dollar is very powerful at this point, considering the fact that, you know, it is a massively inflated tool that is utilized to keep those that are in power in power and keep those that are wealthy wealthy but at the end of the day right like as we really look at what's going on with bitcoin and with crypto it's now a major talking subject because listen there's so there's so many more people in crypto now than ever before and i do think that it's going to become a big topic around politics I don't think that I need to remind you guys about the Joe Biden uh, image. That's a lot of people were saying that it was scary. A lot of people said that it was weird, but this got posted on February 11th and you can see the amount of views, the likes, the engagement on it. Absolutely insane. But regardless, it seems as though, like I said, crypto is all the talk in politics. And I don't really care about supporting red or blue. I don't really talk about it too much on the channel because I just don't really care to. Um, I'm running a crypto channel, not a politics channel. But regardless, I do think that one thing to really kind of note is the fact that I think that crypto at some point in time will soon determine who does win because it's just like another, you know, right. Everyone wants to be able to buy and sell crypto. They want to be able to um, have this market have no hiccups in the road. And a lot of the problems that have happened in just the last couple of years around crypto uh, really kind of stemmed from individuals like Gary Gensler. And guess who appointed him? Joe Biden. Now, again, that's not a stab at Joe Biden or anything like that, but I'm just saying like, as we really look at things, I feel as though now more than ever before, a lot of people are going to be looking at those that are pro-crypto, pro-innovation, um, and want to support innovation because we are falling greatly behind. And if you actually care about the US, then you would be supporting those that actually care about innovation, actually care about crypto, because this is an asset class that is not just going to go away. It's not fading away anytime soon. It's only going to continue to grow and grow and grow much larger, especially as more and more technological advancements happen and also implementation around crypto happen as well but also beyond that we actually had uh, a little bit of a viewpoint put on gary gensler big shout out to crypto airy for this gary gensler president biden and the democrats in congress should consider appointing a new chair to restore the sec's integrity with a balanced reliable chairman this is a former member of congress Transportation, Treasury, Independent Agency, Subcommittee, House Appropriations Committee as well. And I feel as though this is something to also note, considering the fact that people are tired of dealing with individuals like Gary Gensler um, because they are losing integrity. 
they're losing the respect that the SEC, the small amount, by the way, of respect that the SEC had before Gary Gensler. Now, mind you, I've already talked about it in the past. The SEC has an SEC problem, not just a Gary Gensler problem. You have Jay Clayton, you have Bill Hinman. I mean, come on. Yeah. With all these issues under one, one roof, you kind of have to blame the house, not the people living in it. Now, Gary Gensler, I mean, he is one that we have to put a spotlight on because I do think that he is the worst out of all of the other commissioners and even worse than Bill Hinman. Um, because this is one that has been touting protecting investors for a very long time while harming those that he's trying to, in quotation marks, protect. Again, when we look at what's going on around politics and even in the US, I feel as though those that actually support innovation, those that actually care about innovation, they are going to utilize their power to vote and they are going to attempt to vote these individuals out. The best way to do that is by choosing the right president that is going to also accommodate for those needs. Um, but beyond that, right, one of the biggest things that we recently saw as well is the ECB. So outside of politics, uh, outside of all that, the European Central Bank put out a post regarding Bitcoin. And we actually have Bitcoin has failed to become a global decentralized digital currency. Instead, falling victim to fraud and manipulation. The recent approval of an ETF doesn't change the fact that Bitcoin is costly, slow, inconvenient, argues the ECB blog. Now, this is a central bank. Um, hello? What about the problems within your own house? We have Chainalysis found that only 0.34% of the transaction volume within cryptocurrencies in 2023 was attributable to criminal activity. Bitcoin share of this is significantly lower than 25%. Illicit activities or transactions uh, with euros accounted for 1% of the EU's GDP or 110 billion euros in, 20, uh, in 2010. Hmm. Very, very interesting. But regardless, right? They have ETF approval for Bitcoin, the naked emperor's new clothes. How interesting. Now, a lot of people responded back to this. And even if you hate Bitcoin, even if you don't support Bitcoin, even if you don't hold any Bitcoin, a central bank talking like this about Bitcoin makes you wonder why they're talking about it like that, which we will get to here in a second. But regardless, we have from Stack Hodler, the euro has lost 99.5% of its value versus Bitcoin in, the le in less than 10 years. Meanwhile, 97% of all trading days are in profit for Bitcoin, meaning anyone who has euro cost averaged into Bitcoin instead of holding onto ECB's flaming garbage is massively in profit right now. People use Bitcoin as a way to escape from the systemic time theft that your organization enacts on the entire continent. When you debase currency, you are stealing the time and energy that people put into their work. Your policies force people to work harder and longer just to keep up with inflation. Your organization is responsible for much of the moral decay, um, exacerbation, and hopelessness that is widespread today. You have zero moral high ground. And I completely agree. That's also why I hear, you know, when we hear the talks of like, oh, I only believe in one currency and that's the dollar because the dollar is extremely, uh, you know, strong. Again, it's, it's the same exact argument with the euro, right? Like when we talk about value versus these, these actual fiat currencies, it's a night and day difference. I mean, why, like, give me five reasons why we should actually be hodling dollars instead of investing our money and putting it to work. I mean, losing over two plus per two plus percent uh, per year is ridiculous on fiat currency, and that's that's their end goal. Like when we talk about central bankers, their end goal, at least in the U.S., is two percent inflation. At two percent, you're still losing two percent per year. Think about how insane that is. But beyond that, when we go back in time to May of 2022, we have. Christine Lagarde says crypto is worth nothing. They're worth nothing. That's what she said. Lagarde said she thinks crypto should be regulated to protect inexperienced investors. Her comments come at a time of heightened regulatory scrutiny of the crypto market. Now, mind you, 
This was May of 2022. Guess what we had happened just a few months later? FTX. At the same exact time that this got posted, I think Luna was imploding. Definitely interesting. But this is right around, you know, the, the local bottom or close to it. And uh, here we have again from the ECB saying, hey, Bitcoin is failing. It has failed. But the euro is still good because, you know, it, it does whatever the euro does, which is lose value against Bitcoin. Now, obviously, that's a joke. Yes, we know that the euro does a lot of things, but I'm just it's, it's the fact that like, how could you say something like Bitcoin or crypto is failing or it's worth nothing while the euro against pretty much all cryptocurrencies in the top 10, top 15, even the top 50 is down significantly versus them. It's crazy to me. But we also have over here, Christine Lagarde is right. Central banks have acted as an anchor for the global economy, an anchor tied to its legs and dragging it to the bottom of the ocean towards a painful death. Check this out. Where do we stand? We central bankers. We have been operating as a monetary anchor in relation to the commercial banks and the private money. If we are not in that game, if we are not involved in experimenting, in innovating in terms of digital uh, central bank money, we risk losing the role of anchor that we have played uh, for many, many decades. And we have historical examples of period where the central bank uh, monetary anchor was not there and that precipitated crisis after crisis. That certainly was the case at the time of the free banking in the 19th century. Do we want to go back to those days? Probably not. I would say certainly not from our vantage point, as a result of which we have to respond to the demand for those digital payments in order to maintain the role of anchor that we have uh, been playing uh, regularly. So after hearing that, it's kind of clear on why the ECB is attacking Bitcoin, attacking crypto, and uh, even why we hear about crypto is worth nothing. Like this was May of 2022. This was like right after that. This is like around the summer of 2022. This got posted in September of 2022, but I bring it back up because like we clearly see the game that they're trying to play here. And also we have over here, the president of the European Central Bank, Christine Lagarde, announces the launch of EU central bank digital currency, the digital euro, which will enable unelected technocrats at the ECB to program how, when, where, on what, and by whom it can be spent, including the imposition of social credit. Uh, carbon allowance and vaccine passport uh, system. Now, if we actually scroll down, we could actually listen to this and hear what she has to say about this. Listen closely. The digital euro is on the move. Yesterday, the governing council of the ECB approved the opening of the preparation phase. It will be a journey and we will walk the journey together with the legislator. All European institutions will be involved to make sure that Europe is equipped with the currency of the future. Cash is here to stay. You will have all options, cash and digital cash. So what does it mean for you? For consumers, it would be free and easy to use everywhere in the Euro area. All of that, of course, is subject to the legislative process. Cash or digital, the choice will be yours. The digital euro is... Now, of course, they always have to hint at the fact that cash or digital, the choice will be yours. But we know that they're going to phase out cash. It, it, every single document by the World Economic Forum, by all the central banks, it's all about phasing out cash. And it's going to happen over time. It's not going to happen immediately. But once we have CBDCs rolling the lands, they're going to start you know, getting rid of cash. That they're going to phase it out. But what's crazy about all of this, right, is that they're openly talking about CBDCs that utilize private ledger technology. It's the same exact thing that Bitcoin's running on, except it's public ledger technology. It's the same exact thing that XRP's running on. Same thing that a lot of these projects are running on. And what's crazy is if you go back in time to 2017, IMF head foresees the end of banking and the triumph of cryptocurrency. And this is Christine Lagarde. Then, in 2018, winds have changed the case for the new digital currency. This was November 14th of 2018. That's when they started to talk heavily about this. And 
there's three things to watch for with this. And it's first frame the issue in terms of changing nature of money and the fintech revolution. By the way, this is all around central banks uh, really talking about cross-border payments as well. Second, evaluate the role for central banks in this new financial landscape, especially in providing digital currency. Third, look at some downsides and consider how they can be minimized. What's crazy about this, right, is that they're, they're addressing how this is a revolution. And they outlined all of the major things around this, and they even come to the conclusion that things are changing rapidly. We need to be behind it as well. What's crazy is if you go back in time to a lot of the meetings with even uh, Brad Garlinghouse and all of these big players, even Christine Lagarde, it really kind of hints at the fact that we know one company at least that is going to be a part of this revolution, and that is Ripple. And XRP and the XRP Ledger will also be a part of that journey. I've talked about it many times in the past. So when we hear these, all of this noise about how Bitcoin has failed, crypto has failed, crypto is worth nothing, stay away from crypto, central, bank, you know, central banks need to retain anchor, all this nonsense, it's them protecting themselves, basically. But central banks were never going to be fully replaced. We know that. They're going to be a part of it, and they're going to be a part of it by having these CBDCs. I've talked about it in the past. A lot of people think that CBDCs are not going to happen. I personally look at them as inevitable because how are we going to stop it, right? Unless we have a full-on ban of CBDCs, and I'm talking about not just through presidency, like we're talking about a full-blown ban from the Fed, I still believe that the US will have a CBDC. But I've talked about it, right? We're not just going to have CBDCs. It's going to be CBDCs, stable coins, and fiat for the remaining life cycle of fiat. But stable coins are the main focus. But either way, they're both programmable. They're both things to focus on. But remember, your bank account can be frozen. Your bank account can be wiped out. Your bank account could easily be shut down. They could do that. They do it all the time. So when we look at things happening right now, the only control mechanism that we really have is cash. But guess what? That will be phased out. They are already starting to phase it out. The pandemic was the major beginning to that. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe to notifications on because more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the video in the description below. And with that being said, guys, it's been Nick. Thanks for watching. Peace out.